Normally, vocal provincial premiers are being mostly diplomatic about the federal election campaign. Many of them are staying out of the fray, even those currently fighting against national carbon pricing programs. Some premiers, so what motivates premiers, rather, to campaign for their federal counterparts and others to watch from the sidelines? Let's ask the Premier's League joining us today. Christy Clark was Premier of BC from 2011 to 2017. She's now a senior advisor with Bennett Jones and joins us from Vancouver. In Toronto, Bob Ray, Premier of Ontario from 1990 to 95. He also served as former interim leader of the federal Liberal Party. He's also the host of politi the Political Stripes podcast. I was on the second one, so please download it. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Ray. Hi, thanks I'll start with that. you. I think we're still waiting on some technical difficulties with Ms. Clark. <laughs> Let me ask you, did you ever campaign for a federal leader while you were premier? Well, in 93, I was probably uh, like uh, an anchor around Ed Broadbent. Uh, or no, it wasn't Ed Broadbent. It was uh, Audrey McLaughlin around her neck. I mean, I, it was not... <laughs> It was not a great, great time for me to be out campaigning. <laughs> but the reality, you know, speaking very honestly, the reality is, as a provincial politician, it really depends on whether you think you're going to be an asset to a campaign. Um, it's, it's the campaigns are not really about you. Uh, the reality is, you're, you're at best a, a kind of supportive player from time to time. Um, but it, you know, it, I think. There's a lot of a lot of examples of where premiers have tried to get involved and have ended up becoming the issue, and they themselves, um, you know, don't help the campaign. I think that, frankly, I think that's one of the reasons why Premier Ford is not campaigning in Ontario. And I, I mean, I've look, I've been up and down a, a lot <laughs> in politics, so uh, you know, I understand completely why he's not campaigning, and uh, I also understand why the Liberal Party is trying to tie Andrew 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 Shear to uh, to Mr. Ford. Um, it really depends on the situation, but you've got to be very careful that you don't, you don't push yourself to the point where you, you, become, you become an issue and you're no, you're no longer a help to, uh, to a federal campaign. Ms. Clark, what do you think? Uh, have you ever campaigned on behalf of a federal leader while you were premier? And what do you think of the, of the prospect of that happening this time around? I have never done it, and I'll tell you why. Very specifically, just like in Quebec, British Columbia's non-New Democrat party is a coalition of liberals and conservatives. So in provincial elections, you want all the federal liberals and all the federal conservatives to roll up their sleeves and work together. And so no leader of a, of a BC uh, free enterprise party has gotten into the federal fray since 1952. So it's, it's, a, it's a different tradition here, very much like they ha what they have in Quebec, and I, Bob is absolutely right about everything that he said. And I, I, I would also, I mean, I also don't think it. <laughs> I also don't think it has that much impact. I think Jason Kenney might be an exception, only in as much as, I mean, people in Ontario don't want Ontario, Alberta premiers in there telling them what to do, but his relationships with uh, multicultural communities around Toronto where the Conservatives need votes and around Vancouver where the Conservatives need votes are very very rich and deep and I think what he believes is he can make a difference specifically in that because I don't think anybody in Toronto is going to want to you know vote for a candidate because the Premier of Alberta tells them to do that I think those relationships are what's going to make the difference if he can make a difference at all. What about the strategy, Mr. Ray, of what we saw from the Premier of Quebec yesterday, Francois Legault, who kind of issued a list of demands or asks, however you want to characterize them, specific things that he wants to see satisfied by all the, four, all the, all the major party leaders? What did, what did you think of that? I, I frankly wasn't that impressed. I mean, you know, it, it, and I don't think any, fe federal part, any federal party worth its salt would say, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do, we're going to give the Premier of Quebec everything that he's asking for and everything that he wants. Um, I, 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 I don't think it works. I, I think that even in Quebec, which you know, we all know is, is distinct and has its own sort of political realities, I think, truth be told, um, the people will make their minds up on issues that relate to the federal election. And there are lots of examples in Canadian history going back to the beginning of, of all Canadian elections, and that is that people vote provincially one way, they vote federally another way, and it's a big mistake for provincial premiers to think that they can dictate the result of an election campaign in a federal election. I don't think it works. I see you nodding, Ms. Clark. 
Is yeah, Bob, I mean, Ray, I, Bob Ray right again on all fronts? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. This is getting terrifying. Front. This is just. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I just think there's only so much value you can add. I, I, and I, the thing about it, too, is the premiers who said in the clip beforehand um, are kind of, it, they're right on when they say, we have to work with whoever's there. And you have to fight for all of the people in your province on their behalf, with Ottawa, with whoever's there. And the danger in campaigning, I mean, uh, Premier Kenny, you know, they're 35 points ahead. They're, the Liberals are 35 points behind in Alberta or some huge number. It probably doesn't make a difference for him. But in the rest of the provinces, working together with the federal government is really important because they don't have a lot of power to execute things, but they have the money and they set the tax rates and they build lots of the infrastructure and they do the regulations. So provinces who want to create economic growth need to be able to work with Ottawa and that's a good reason not to take sides in a federal campaign. Quick final question to both of you, Mr. Ray, I'll start with you. Just on a number of the promises that we've been hearing from this federal leaders that overlap with provincial jurisdiction, I'm thinking of charm, uh, child care rather, pharmacare, tuition for post-secondary institutions. Do you think that's problematic at all? Uh, is, it, is it realistic? Is it feasible? What do you make of it? Well, well I mean, uh, one of your previous uh, pundits said it was a, a bobble and trinket election. There are a lot of, a lot of promises being made <coughs> on every front by every, every party, every leader, every day. Um, I think the reality of, of a lot of federal provincial programs, whether it's tuition or, 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 or pharmacare or whatever it is, uh, it has to be done with federal provincial cooperation. I mean, I think you, you know, you, if you're going to develop a, a, a healthy confederation, you need to recognize that you know you don't just step in and say, "Here's a wonderful program, go and do it." Provinces have a, a long history of running programs themselves, of being involved in making programs work, um, and and I think it, it it you know it's important for everybody to do a bit of a reality check. What is promised in an election campaign? when it affects directly provincial jurisdiction is not going to happen exactly the way it's promised in the election campaign. It's going to involve an, an awful lot of discussion with the provinces. Some provinces will want to participate in it. Other provinces will, will want to do it differently. And that's part of the joy of, of living in a federal country. Ms. Clark, final word to you. Well, if a federal politician promises you more childcare spaces, all they are doing is value sig signaling. They saw in their polling that people care about child care. They want to prove that they care about child care. So they say that. There is nothing that they can deliver on the ground in that. And it kind of, I think this sort of what we're seeing now is we, you, you look at Brian Mulroney, Jean Chrétien, Paul Martin, um, Pierre Trudeau. They were prime ministers of they were, a, they were prime ministers of big ideas. And I think what we have now in this election is a campaign of Instagram ideas. It's all the little stuff. It's all the value signaling. It's all the talk. But there isn't really even an ability, much less, I don't think, an intent to be able to deliver lots of those things that ultimately provinces deliver because it's provinces that are in people's lives every day, not the federal government. Okay. All right, I have to leave it there, but I want to thank both of you for your time this evening. Thanks so much to former Premier of BC, Christy Clark, and former Premier of Ontario, Bob Ray. Hope to see you both next week, same place, same time. Hi, I'm Vashi Capellos, host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.